Hello, Prime Media audiences. This is Ladette, your host. I am here with a special guest. I'm actually here at the Ukrainian Embassy. Uh, I am here uh, with the Charge de Affairs, uh, Mr. Uh, Alexander Zuboff. I'm really honored uh, that, uh, Mr. Alexander, that you're able to give us uh, a few minutes of your time to meet us and uh, give us an interview. Uh, I really appreciate your time and I'm really honored to be here at your embassy and uh, uh, get to uh, have uh, our, our audiences um, get to hear uh, uh, what's going on in Ukraine. So thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'll go ahead and um, just start off by um, asking you, what do you want uh, the world uh, to know about um, Ukraine. What do you want the world um, to know about Ukraine currently? Thank you very much. You are here. We are very pleased to see you, to meet you. You know, as all uh, civilized world knows these days, these weeks, uh, that uh, Russia started unprovoked war against Ukraine. They invaded my country. They, every day they kill, they kill our people, children, women. So we, today we have 11th day of that nightmare. We try to be strong. And with this, I would like uh, shortly to uh, mm, ex explain for our Ethiopian friend, for uh, our friendly Ethiopia, what was the beginning of this all. In 2014, Russia annexed one of, our, of Ukrainian arm, Crimea, with uh, people who live there because Russia ha has uh, that peninsula a military base. After that, according to their tactics, they issued a lot of Russian passports and created a situation allegedly people suffer. That's why they annexed it in 2014. We, I mean Ukraine, Ukraine has been trying to negotiate all these eight years, starting from 2014. But Russia, just after that annexation, illegal annexation, they broke international law. They started conflict on the east of Ukraine. Lugansk and Donetsk region. It's very small area here, very small area, and they, they pump it with weapon, with terrorists, and all these eight years they stand it against Ukraine. As for and as for 24 of uh, February this year, terrorists created line which they strictly control it. I mean that nobody from Ukrainian side couldn't, couldn't, nobody could threat or any kind of violation to that people who live there. And it's still part of Ukraine. Yes, because those parts of Ukraine are our brothers also. I mean people, civilians. We, we never could do this. And terrorists prevented it by their Iron Curtain. With weapons, they stand on the east. So, 24 of February this year, early in the morning, like fascist in 1941, they attacked Ukraine from third, from three directions. First one was from Chernobyl area, from Belarus, Belarus. Second one was from Crimea, they tried. And third one attack was from this eastern part, which were pumped by Russia with terrorists. So for this day, they try to make, to realize three phases of their so-called special military operation. So they want to block capital of our country, Kiev, and they want to make a corridor from Crimea, which was annexed in 2014, make corridor to another 
uh, illegal territory which was created in Moldova, Pridnestrovia. They want to cut us off from the sea and make this corridor. And third one, terrorists from the east would like to attack our, this is administrative borders. They try to attack it and also to block Kharkov, the biggest cities of Ukraine, Zaporozhye, there is a power plant. And here, Chernobyl. You remember Chernobyl? 1986 was yes, So, now they control this facilities, nuclear power plants, and they intensively shelling our civilian infrastructure. Because Russians want to create humanitarian catastrophe, you know. As they did it before, if you please look at this short video, as always, they want to liberate countries in the world, especially which concerns independent countries. It was Transnistria in Moldova, Georgia, Abkhazia, no, you remember that region, Grozny, Chechnya, First Chechen War, Second Chechen War, then Dagestan with casualties. Now they work in Syria and they are mercenaries. Central African Republic. And our turn was in 2014 about Ukraine, Crimea and east part of Ukraine. Donbass and Lugansk. Donetsk and Lugansk. We lost during that time 16, more than 16,000. And now now they tried to invade regions I showed you. So you can see, you can see only several photos which can prove that civilians are target. Where are these pictures from? This is Kharkov city, Chernigov. This is from uh, Kiev street, civilian. This is private sector near Kiev, Irpin, if you know, Irpin, Bucha. 20 kilometers from Kyiv, private sector. I mean, people, simple, single people lived, lived there. And now they were forced to evacuate from that area to West, to Lviv, to Poland, to Czech Republic, to Romania, to Hungary, all our friends from those countries. We so much appreciate their help because they, they, they give shelters for our people, you know. Early in the morning, 24 of February, people were uh, awoken by the explosions. Nobody could understand what happened. You see the rocket didn't explode, thankfully. For today, we have over 2,000 civilian losses. 51 child was dead, is dead because of Russia invasion. They do not, this is a picture which demonstrates that plans were uh, approved by Putin long before, long before February. 11 of February, the president of France visited Putin, tried to persuade him not to invade. Putin agreed. 15 of February, Chancellor Scholz from Germany visited Putin. The same tried, all civilized war tried to persuade United, United States also tried to persuade, warned about sanctions, drastic, drastic sanctions, but Putin didn't listen to anybody. He made it before, the decision before the, those days. This, as you see, this is security pass. One of southern cities, Nova Kahovka, it was prepared for, people, for civilians by Russian troops. This is security pass. They can move between the cities with this. So you can imagine how long and how deep was preparation to this war from Russia. And now Ukrainian forces try to deblock the cities. And we are very well confident, I mean Ukraine is confident, that invaders will be eliminated. All who came to us with a weapon will be eliminated or they will 
withdraw their troops. Who is, who is going to be eliminated? Russian invaders. Ukraine will em eliminate everybody who invaded. At the same time, we try to negotiate, to, we try to start negotiations. We suggested. What do you mean by your, Ukraine is going to eliminate? We will not stand if uh, aggressor will come and block and go to our cities and kill people. All with weapon, I mean Russians, who are now on our territory, will be eliminated. What is the reason for, um, for this situation? Um, I think you, you did talk about exactly what's happening right now. Um, but in regards to Ukraine, uh, for the world to know what is the reason you said um, that uh, President Putin has been uh, getting ready for this and what is the reason for him? Uh, what is the reason that they have uh, entered Ukraine? Yes. In our opinion, he, his country, his country is big. He created it like a fortress, those territories from this that we can see Transnistria, Moldova, Georgia, about Abkhazia and so North Ossetia, Dagestan, after that, they try to, pro to make protection po uh, fortresses because Russia is afraid of West, you know. Afraid of what? West. Vast? Western countries. Oh, Western countries. Yes. You mean the P European yes. countries? Putin doesn't know what is democracy, development, civilization, you know? He just know what invasion, war, conflict, like that. That's why when in, when in 2014 our society made a sign of dignity, because you, as you know, President Yanukovych, who was at that time, he stopped our European Union integration process. And he ran to Russia, escaped to Russia. Yanukovych was their man who tried to make Ukraine closer to Russia and under Russia. It is like today, in these days, Putin did with Belarus, with Lukashenko. He brought troops to Belarus. He located his strategic weapon and he tries to use Lukashenko and his troops for attacks on Ukrainian territories. Okay, so, um, so President Putin does not want um, the Western influence. Is that the reason why um, he's in Ukraine, the democratic uh, system um, that the Western influences or is it because there's other interests in Ukraine? He wants to uh, make Ukraine his uh, territory, as he did with Belarus. He is desperate of the idea to renew Soviet Union, which collapsed in 1991. And he does it in the same way, and even these days. What about um, um, you know, uh, Ukraine's status in, uh, within the NATO. Um, was that some, uh, s some sort of a deal made uh, when Ukraine uh, uh, had her independence? Was there any sort of an agreement? Because uh, I think some countries make agreements uh, initially whenever there's some sort of a, um, independence. Was there anything that, um, that was not kept uh, on Ukraine side or on Russian side, agreement. Ukraine is independent country. Mm -hmm. Our European Union and NATO aspirations are in our constitution. As independent country, we can choose by ourselves. We do not want to threat to make a threat to anybody. But our aspirations are in our hearts. You know that's why. We cannot stand when somebody outside, I mean Russia or Belarus, will try to stop these aspirations. They don't want uh, people to be happy, you know. As you can see, these days even, Russia is isolated. A lot of businesses left Russia. It's not even about 
military or something like that, business left Russia. And people are isolated due to Putin's desperation, you know. He doesn't care about people and about anything because he is a dictator. He, 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 he worked a long time in KGB, you know, security of uh, Soviet Union. He worked in the field of propaganda and mis misleading, you know. He twists the situation professionally. That's why these days he says that he liberates our country. Can you imagine if any other country, independent country, can be liberated from something by invaders? Now we live in 21st century. It's not mid-ages. Chapter of the United Nations strictly says about it, that every country is you know, independent, can choose the way of development, its development. So there, so there was no agreement, or there was, I, I mean, uh, absolutely right, uh, um, countries need to choose. Um, the reason why I ask those questions is because globally, um, some areas uh, in, you know, in the world, for instance, um, um, you know, tomorrow, if, uh, or let's say, you know, if China chooses, you know, to have some, some sort of um, uh, cooperation uh, with a, a country like, uh, you know, Mexico and um, starts building a military base there. Uh, that would be a perfectly independent thing for Mexico to do or um, vice versa for China. But it obviously can cause some sort of a conflict or issue with, uh, with the neighboring United States. That's the reason why, you know, I asked, is there any type of agreement in a sense of um, you know, uh, is NATO's expansion a threat to Russia? I think you already answered that. Um, but, um, you know, what are some of the steps taken um, to ensure that um, uh, Russia doesn't have uh, those concerns? Uh, as we can con simply con compare, for example, 2014, Crimea was annexed illegally. Nobody threatened to Russia. They just wanted to keep their military base, you know? So this is, this was first move from Russia against Ukraine. Nobody from West didn't do the same or something even like that. Because democracy, it's, it's different, very different, different than Putin, you know? So now, before 24th of February this year, a lot of leaders from Western countries visited Putin and tried to explain him. He didn't, before, he didn't choose the peaceful way. He suggested NATO countries unacceptable conditions. So he didn't accept How the can it be possible to withdraw NATO troops up to the line of 1997, yes? This is the same, for example, I think, for example, if compared with Ethiopia, that somebody could tell from outside that uh, Renaissance dump, please stop it, or even, you know, clean the place. They did. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, but, you know, yeah. it's unacceptable for it's our unacceptable. friend Ethiopia, and every Ethiopian would... Yeah, but that's development, and yeah. that's why, you know, um, the, the, de the development is, is not actually installing um, like I said, you know, the cause of security. Um, but I, 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 I see your point clearly um, that the Western leaders have attempted to, um, to reach out to the um, president of Russia. Um, I want to move on to our next question um, uh, discussion because I think each question we will have um, enough to discuss. Um, so you just showed me um, um, uh, some um, pictures where civilian uh, areas have been attacked. Um, um, and uh, how, uh, how is the mainstream media, um, uh, recently we've, you know, we've dealt, uh, Ethiopia has dealt with uh, some uh, mainstream media uh, uh, on her own. And um, how has you know mainstream media such as CNN and so forth 
um, have been uh, with Ukraine, the Russia situation, in your opinion? How has that gone? In my opinion, and the opinion of my country, eh, all mass media these days shows the truth, what happens in Ukraine. Mass media shows show how, how much Ukraine suffer because of Russian invaders. That's why it's very important to deliver the message to, to the world, to all world. So it's very important to, to show. For example, Putin, as I told you, he is very professional at propaganda and is misleading. He tries to say that he is liberator. But actually, the, as I told you before, today is 21st century. It's not mid-ages. He cannot just annex, do annexation or invade an, uh, any country and say, this why, because my parliament decided or I decided to do it, you know? We have United Nations. We need to follow uh, rule of law. That's why. Nobody can just uh, go inside uh, in country and kill and uh, you know, rape and everything. That's why yesterday in Hague, prosecutor started trial against Russian invaders and true and Putin personally. And uh, I, I hope that everything will be investigated quickly and Putin will be brought to the justice for that. Um, so how do you think the Ukraine is currently being seen by the mainstream media? Western? Yes. Uh, I think correctly. Yes, everything as I see on the streets of Addis Ababa, everything is shown to, to, to people, to Ethiopian friends, what, is, what happens in, in Ukraine. How much, how much we suffer because of this invasion, about humanitarian situation, because everything is connected, you know. Humanitarian catastrophe, which is uh, caused by Russia, it is, uh, next step, it is about students from many African countries. Some cities which Putin tries to block, for example, Sumy, a lot of students from India and China start here. Why he does it? He tries to shell, to, to attack civilian infrastructure, to make people panic, for panic, you know? Because he, as a good KGB, you know, security officer in previous, he understands if there will be panic, it will be easier to, to take the city. That's why he, he tries to block ma main cities. This is his main, main story in this invasion. And, and students stuck here. And at the same time, his ministry, Ministry of Defense tried to make a lot of ways, fake ways, for evacuation from that area. Maybe you, you remember in previous, when was the Baltsevo, the Baltsevo and Ilovaisk, when Russia surrounded no, you know, in circle, took in circle that uh, cities and promised that people and troops can go freely by Green Corridor. And just after people went by this corridor, they were uh, executed. Russians executed those peoples, you know? That's why the same he tries to do in these cities. So what does negotiation look like for, uh, you know, um, obviously, the world, uh, including Russia and Ukraine, um, uh, do not want uh, continued conflict, humanitarian uh, catastrophe. Um, just in Ethiopia in the past year, we've had um, a lot of um, humanitarian catastrophe. And at the end of the day, um, uh, what you know the world needs is you know peace and. Um, conflict-free zones where people can uh, have human rights that are respected. And um, what is, you know, the negotiation like? Um, I think uh, the world agrees that we all need the basic uh, human rights um, uh, for all, you know, outside of the politics, at least I should say. Um, what is the negotiation like? How is that going or what, what should, what do you think is from the, from the first day of that invasion, all, all of us in Ukraine pray for peace. Our president suggested 
negotiations from the very beginning of this invasion. But Putin tries to escape it because he loses a lot these, these days in Ukraine. Loses what? Russian troops. Okay, so he's... L Over 11,000 of Russian troops already killed in Ukraine. Okay, so 11,000 Ukrainian soldiers have you been Russian, killed. You Russian, Russian. Russians, yes, sorry. Yes, invaders, uh, invaders, yes. 11,000 Russians. Yes. Uh, more than 500 armored vehicles, more than 60 aircrafts, combat aircrafts. So Putin loses these days. He planned to invade and took Ukraine in three days only. But today is 11th day. 11th day we stand against him. We appreciate very much our EU family partners. And we stand there and Putin understands he loses his face. That's why he tries to make the stakes higher. He's sharing civilian infrastructure. He promises people about green corridors for evacuation. And after that several hours, he refuses. You know, he tries to make people to be nervous, extremely nervous, and feel panic. And today, we have third round of negotiations. Okay. He doesn't want to make peace in Ukraine because he he declares unacceptable for Ukraine conditions. For example, we need to forget about our heart, he says. We need, we, he wants us to admit that Russia is not Ukrainian, you know? The same as somebody would say to our sisterly, friendly Ethiopia, please forget about Alpha Shaga. No, you know, the area. We cannot, because it's a part of us like arms, legs, you know, like that. So do you see any hope in the negotiation? Or yes, sure. Uh, That's why our partners, our partners from the European well, Union. Who are the partners? Your, your partners? From European Union, okay. Turkey, Israel. They try to persuade desperate Putin to sit at the table because we need to talk and we need to, to find some points, win-win points. It's not about that we need to, to be florid, you know. We need, first of all, stop shelling and rocking, rocking, shelling infrastructure, civilian infrastructure. Then, this first stage. After that, Russian invaders might, must be withdrawn from Ukraine. So this is very easy for, for any country. We cannot negotiate when bombs are falling on our heads. That's why. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Um, some, some countries are you know, clearly taking sides. Uh, you just mentioned um, you know, uh, our partners or our allies, um, and therefore you know, it's clear that you know, some countries are taking sides. Um, I don't know, uh, quite frankly, if uh, you know, that is helpful to the Russian and, and Ukrainian um, conflict because sometimes, um, you know, uh, that has its own um, issues. Uh, what would be uh, both uh, helpful for both Russia and Ukraine? What do you want from other countries? Recently, we showed that we, we, we were witnessed with the result, United Nations General Assembly resolution vote. You remember, 141 countries supported Ukraine. It's very clear to show who is not correct in that situation. Because Putin tries to explain that he is a liberator. But 141, you know, it was a very bright result when international community saw the situation. And now we are ready for, to negotiate. Our president called it Putin to meet him any, any place, any third part or, you know, to, to negotiate and to meet, to find win-win solution. But Putin loses face his, these days. He loses his troops. It never happened before. That's why he wants to punish as much as he can Ukraine, you know, to, to, to make a bloodshed in Ukraine. His troops 
tries to kill civilians, children, women, you know. That's why he wants to show that Ukraine is zero. But Ukraine is not zero. He must understand it, 21st century, you know, it's an independent country. Okay, thank you so much. Um, currently, um, the black community in the world is a bit frustrated about, you know, vi video surfacing uh, where Africans are experiencing issues with um, boarding borders, um, uh, experiencing raci racism in Ukraine and, and Poland. Um, and it's been circulating heavily uh, on social media and so forth. Uh, what is your thought on that? We have 10 embassies in Africa, Ukraine, I mean, ha, have, has 10 embassies. Every embassy is 10. Okay. Is, uh, every of our embassy is responsible for students from that country in Ukraine. When Putin created humanitarian catastrophe in Ukraine by his invasion, a lot of people didn't expect it, didn't expect it that it was, it was so terrific. About 800,000 of Ukrainians and international students left to West because they flee the conflict. They flee in the condition when some cities are about to be, you know, by Russian troops, to be surrounded by Russian troops and all provocations. And that situation is deepened by Russia propaganda. Today, President of European Council, uh, many, uh, maybe you know, unveiled the statement where he condemned Russian propaganda because the same time with invasion on the field, Putin started informational war against Ukraine. And all his information troops tried to blackmail, you know, and make the situation bad. That's why we heard about cases. But for this day, we have a lot of witnesses from African country students, video proofs, who already left to Poland, over France, to Romania, to other countries on the West. And they prove by video that situation was twisted by Russians and everything went okay when they, uh, transport, when they were transported by trains, buses, cars, you know. All conditions on the, on the border, on the Ukrainian border, is equal for any nationality, regardless of the nation or the color of skin or, you know. So, Mr. Alexander, are you saying that uh, um, the, 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 there was no um, racism or blocking uh, borders in, you know, with the African students or um, they did not experience um, being told? Um, no, to nobody expected that war because just before 24th of February, Putin waved by his head that everything will be okay, he will not invade Ukraine that he is uh, for peace and so on, so on. Nobody expected. Next day, everybody in Ukraine was shocked, you know, by this unprovoked invasion. That's why people were so scared. They started to flee the conflict. And Ukraine, for this day, Ukraine created all, simplified the procedure of check-in on the border as much as it possible. People even, I mean foreign students, can, can cross the border even without passport. We cooperate closely, I mean, our, minister, our embassy with the embassy of Ethiopia in Berlin and other, our embassy located in Africa, as I told you, they cooperate closely with their counterparts. We know, our embassy, no, embassies know exact amount of students, leaders of that groups, and they, they cooperate every day, communicate. Some people stuck in Sumy, in Sumy, because Russians, you know, they cannot be evacuated uh, without threat of their life. Ukraine tries to secure the situation as much as possible and then to provide people with transport to be evacuated. That's why, with these circumstances, using moral standards, when children, pregnant women must go, you know, first, because no, because they are innocent. 
at all. That's why Russia tried to twist the situation, because their usual way to disinform, to mislead, that's a Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Um, I think uh, this is uh, the end of our interview. Um, I really appreciate you uh, for taking your time from your very busy day um, and uh, inviting us over uh, to the embassy. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Prime Media audiences, this is Ladette, uh, your host. I'll be back with another special guest. Until then, thank you very much.